Good morning, church. I'm here to give my testimony. And I've really wrestled with this because at least one part of it, I've never told another living soul. This will be the first time. I take that back. I did repeat it or tell it this morning to one person. But outside of that, no one has ever heard it. But what I say is the truth. I was raised in church and got saved when I was 13, 14, and went to church every Sunday. Thank God, praise the Lord, my parents put us in church. Then at 16, things happened that completely changed my life. For the worst, this isn't the good part. I started dating a guy that I knew through church and ended up getting raped. And I never told anyone what had happened, mostly because I blamed myself. I mean, we've all been teenagers, and most of us in here. You know how it is when you're kissing and hugging, how things, and when I said no, it happened anyway. Well, a couple of months later, not even a couple of months later, I find out I'm pregnant. So I tell my parents, and they give me two choices, which at the time, this is what they knew. I do not hold my parents in any way responsible for the choices I made. But they told me I could either marry the father of my child, who did want to marry me, or I could go to a home and give my child up for adoption. I wanted to keep my child. I did not want to give him up. So I married the father of my son. And we went on, that marriage lasted for seven years. And we both did wrong in the marriage. He did wrong, I did wrong. And we tried to keep our marriage together because of our son, but we just, we couldn't do it. God was nowhere in it at all. So we separate, legal separation. During the separation, he hired a private investigator who caught me spending the night with the guy I had started dating. When it went to court because of that one one night, the judge awarded him custody of our son. Now, I had visitation, of course, but that, when I lost my son, my world ended. For all practical purposes, my world ended. And even at that time, it never dawned on me to turn to God. I was so wrapped up in my own sorrow, my own despair. It just didn't dawn on me. So that began years of 
Praise God, I never got involved in drugs. But me and alcohol sure did become good friends. Real good friends. And of course, many relationships, sexual immorality, alcohol. I became a thief. I worked in convenience stores. I started stealing. If I wanted something, I took it. No regard for anyone or anything else. So, and I still, I saw my son through all this time, and we remained kind of close. Well, we were close. We could talk, and, but I just, I would get to points in life where I just couldn't take it anymore. So several times, I did what I hope and pray nobody does, and that is to commit suicide, or try to, several times. And the last time I tried, in 1989, I prayed for God to please take me, because I had been saved. And at that point, I wasn't even sure if I'd go to heaven. But I prayed for God to just let me die because I could not take this life anymore. So, I didn't die, obviously. And the first thing, when I opened my eyes in the hospital that morning, or the next day, whenever, the thought went through my mind, or maybe it was more than a thought, but at the time I thought it was a thought. You're not going to die until God is ready to take you. So I leave the hospital. Shortly after that, I met the man who turned out to be my second husband. Still didn't turn to God at that point. But it had me thinking more about him after that. And praise God, that's the last time I ever tried to commit suicide. The last time. It's never crossed my mind since then. But my second husband and I had a decent marriage. God wasn't in it. But he was a good man. He treated me good. We got along. Then, and he got along good with my son. He and my son were very close. In 2001, in April of that year, my brother that I was closer to than anyone else in my family passed away. In July of that year, my father passed away. On September 11th of that year, well, we know what happened on 911. But when I got home from work that day, my husband told me he was leaving me and he wanted a divorce. That's the second time. Now, I never thought about committing suicide, but that's the second time in my life that I felt like just everybody I loved or cared about was leaving my life. But this time, rather than going back to the alcohol, and back to what I had done the first time when I lost my son, or custody of my son, I did start thinking a lot more about God. I started reading my Bible because I wondered, why are we here? And who am I? So I started reading my Bible. Then I decided one Sunday morning I woke up and I decided to go to church. 
I had no idea what church to go to. So I got dressed, got in my car and started driving and ended up going to the Nazarene Church up here in Madison Heights. And that day I went to the altar and I prayed and I stayed in church and they were great people in that church. The pastor, a great, great man. Not as good as Pastor Dave, but he was good. Peter was a friend of mine too. Yeah, but he was, he was a great man. He talked to me, his wife, the assistant pastors, all of them, very good people. And I was still sinning. And at that point, by that time, I was manager of a convenience store. What started out as stealing, which had turned into embezzlement. I was embezzling. And after all of that happened to me in 2001, I knew I had to quit that job and I had to tell those people what I had done. And that's exactly what I did. I went to my supervisor and told him what I had done and that I had to leave the job. That's the only way I couldn't control the stealing. And I had to take myself out of the position to where I was even tempted. And they didn't believe me. They had no idea and couldn't figure out how I was doing it. I was never prosecuted. And it wasn't no great big huge amount of money, believe me, but it one cent is too much. So I left the job, stayed in church for a while, and promised myself and the Lord I'd never go back into convenience stores. So I went on, then by the end my son had gotten married. I stayed in church, like I said. My grandchildren started being born. And I was trying to live according to the Bible, the Word of God. But I, I knew I was still sinning in certain ways. I still drank some alcohol, not as bad as I had before, but I was still drinking. I was still having sex outside of marriage. So I started listening to the enemy, telling me how I'm a hypocrite. I was being a hypocrite. Here I am going to church on Sunday mornings and then leaving church and the rest of the week sinning. So I stopped going to church. Big, big mistake. Biggest, other than sinning against God, that was the biggest mistake. Because if you don't go to church, you can't learn. So, life went on and I continued reading my Bible. I continued praying. And over time, some of the bad habits I had started leaving, just disappearing. And I'd wake up one day and say, hey, I don't do that anymore. And couldn't figure out how, I knew I hadn't stopped it. Cause before I couldn't prevent it. I tried, maybe I didn't try hard enough, but I had tried. So anyway, in 
well, two and a half, almost three years ago, my daughter-in-law turned against me. And that hurt. That was bad enough. And I'm not going to go into details about what all has gone on. But she started turning my grandkids against me also. That has hurt. And now my son and I, even though we still always maintained a close relationship, we no longer do. But this time, rather than turning back to the world, I turned to God. And that, that, I can tell you right now, made all the difference. Yes. It is only through Jesus Amen. that the shackles that, that had me bound were broken. Amen. And I have been so blessed, praise God. If I had known years ago how happy I could be when other parts of my life is falling apart, oh my goodness, it's amazing. Because I am happy, I mourn over my family. I don't see them very often at all. They don't call me. But the Lord has given me peace. And I know the situation will change. That's right. But I have to wait on the Lord's timing. That's right. And I am more than willing to do that. And I want to live each and every day of my life serving the Lord. Amen. And no one and nothing will come before him ever again. Amen. Thank you.